Hey everyone, before we begin, I just wanted to say thank you everyone for watching my videos during the month of July. July ended up being the most viewed month ever for 222 Productions, and for that, I am very much grateful. This is the second month in a row where this record has been broken, so I hope I continue to produce videos that you will continue to watch, and thank you very much once again. Now with that said, Hey everyone, my name is William on behalf of 222 Productions, and I would like to talk to you about the San Antonio Regional of American Ninja Warrior Season 9 in 20 minutes or less, starting now. So, overall, it was an episode. It was alright. Um, not as good as LA, in my opinion. And this was largely due to the course, quite honestly. So... Uh, let's just uh, let's run through the course here. Uh, 34 ninjas took on a 10 obstacle course this time around. Of course, we started with the floating steps, uh, then the tick-tock, uh, the spinning bridge, uh, then it was the sky hooks, and they made a modification this time compared to qualifiers. Uh, the way it works now is that instead of there being three jumps, there are only two jumps, but each jump, uh, each pair of hooks is uh, spaced further apart, so you have to make longer uh, jumps uh, between them. Uh, similar to the flywheels, you can argue that this obstacle was made easier uh, compared to the qualifiers, simply because there's less uh, movements that the ninjas have to make. And also, um, when they're transferring from ring to ring, it's a bit easier to keep your forward momentum, because the ring, the next ring that you have to grab onto is a bit further out uh, than uh, in, the in the qualifier. Um, so yeah, uh, I think they actually made that easier. Uh, then it's the pipe fitter again. Now this obstacle they definitely made easier for regional finals. That last pipe is just smaller, uh, which allows people to uh, skip it. Um, it was like impossible to skip in the qualifier because it was just too big and too long and just too in the way. Uh, but this one, uh, it's small enough that you can skip. So that one's definitely easier. Then of course is the warped wall, the salmon ladder. And then, after the Salmon Ladder, was the Hourglass Drop. Now, this is the uh, the modified version of the, uh, the Hourglass Drop that we saw last year. Um, now, if you remember, I actually liked last year's version, despite hating the version from two years ago. Because um, I felt like it was uh, a bit fairer um, last year. Oh boy, this year I am back to hating the Hourglass Drop absolutely hating it um so basically you have to grab onto a bar you drop down onto a uh, super tramp and grab onto the boards the wave runner style boards um i don't like that trampoline i think there's too much variable i think it's too much of a specific skill obstacle just from kind of looking at it um because uh, I believe, according to A&W Nation, like 18 people failed it, which is more than half. And this is, like, I don't know how I'm going to, like, actually talk about this episode yet. But this has kind of been a problem with this episode. And you can say it's a problem with a the A&W format in general, is that one of the problems with the regional finals, even though I do like the regional finals more, is that too many times the cutoff point is whoever is who who can clear the salmon ladder the fastest uh, almost always the cutoff is uh people who failed obstacle number eight and you know it was fine back in like a and w like five and six <laughs> now we're up to a and w nine it'd be nice if you know people could make it a little further down the course like one of the things that I was thinking of um, kind of like uh, during this, this this episode was when was the last time clearing the regional finals course actually mattered because because the point because the point of the regionals is to move on the next round it's not you don't necessarily have to clear the course the the most important part is moving on to the next round now in the regional qualifiers I do know that you know the or the place that you rank in the regional qualifiers affects your uh, order in the regional finals, but they don't. It, they, I don't know if your ranking in the regional finals actually affects your run order in Vegas on stage one. I, I haven't gotten a clear answer on that, and 
you know, A&W doesn't make any sort of indication that, that matters anymore. Um, so, you know, in the regional finals, it doesn't really matter if they clear. It just matters if they, you know, do better than, you know, enough people. Um, and so, you know, I look back, you know what the last time someone clearing the regional finals actually mattered? A&W 4. Yeah. That's the last time clearing a regional co finals course actually mattered. It's it's kind of disappointing, actually. Um, but yeah, I don't like the hourglass drop. I think whatever they did the trampoline this time around, it just feels like there's just too much... Uh, feels like too much luck involved for someone who like is inexperienced with jumping on that super trampoline. There's just something about that super trampoline where it's just it just feels like you need to know how to do it. You know, it's not the same thing as like the big Olympic tr style trampolines. It's not the same as the mini tramps that are used for like the jump hang and stuff like that. It's it's an entirely different uh, beast, and it just I don't know. It gets old too. You know, it just it just gets old to see so many people fail the eighth obstacle I, you know i'm not against making the course easier for the sake of making the show entertaining because they're still competing against each other but it's just it'd be nice um and then is the spinball wizard and this is the other reason why i was annoyed at the hourglass drop i wanted to see more people attempt the spinball wizard um it's this cool ops actually because it's, it's really cool it's this cool obstacle so you have a series of um series of, of swing swinging things that are like shaped like this and at the end of the two ends are these uh ball grips that i believe spin and there's different uh each uh each swing has like a different set of movement like the first one it it goes uh on the y-axis um the second one is is stationary so you have to build and jump uh the third one when you build and jump actually in uh both moves on the x and y axis so you move in all directions uh, same thing for the fourth one i don't know about the last one because no one uh, attempted it. everyone just skipped it and uh rightfully so and then of course is the elevator climb uh, an obstacle that i like um so yeah just kind of getting through this uh through everything um so first up was nate burkhalter burkhalter um so his his whole thing was that uh, he had moved from uh, he had moved to Norway due to a job. So he had traveled from Norway to compete on American Ninja Warrior this time around. Um, he ended up uh, being the obstacle that bested him last time. The pipe fitter made it to the hourglass drop, uh, but failed. Um, a lot of people who failed the hourglass drop like didn't even hit. Uh, you know, didn't even hit, touch the uh, the boards. Um, and some just kind of like launched straight to the, like the finish platform and got DQ'd, which, you know, for a show that encourages skipping so much, it just kind of looks poor in that way. Um, uh, they did some fast forwards. Uh, Victor Juarez failed the, uh, uh, failed the salmon ladder and Brittany Hanks failed, uh, the pipe fitter. Um, then was Sam Ballard. Um... This was uh, this was a bit weird. This kind of felt like a, a profile that should have been in regionals, uh, regional qualifiers. Um, his whole thing was that well, he, him and his dad are fans, uh, and his dad was sick and is probably doesn't have a lot lot, lot to lot left uh, with him. Um, so he wanted to uh, get in shape so he can his dad can see him compete, which is fine story. It, it's fine. It's it's whatever. You know, I've, I've complained in the past. I don't really have much complaints about this one. Um, and, yeah. Uh, they keep mentioning how, like, he was not an athlete on the course. Uh, one thing I found funny during his profile is that he built obstacles um, in his backyard. Um, but he ended up... He also built a vertical limit, which is an obstacle that A&W hasn't incorporated yet, but really should. Why have they not incorporated the vertical limit? I have no idea. Um, he also, uh, on his run, he actually had like his, one of his jumps on the sky look, look, it looked like he was going a bit wild cause it looked like he was leaning to the side when on his jump, but like the hook still caught it. So he kind of like, like, you know, kind of whipped in. Yeah, it was, that was cool. Uh, he ended up failing the pipe fitter again. Um, uh, so it ended up not working out for him, but you know, he, his dad got to see him compete. So that's, that's nice. That's nice for him. Um, we had Abel Gonzalez, 
Uh, they start him uh, part of the way at the sky hooks. Uh, then he failed the hourglass drop. Did he make it? I believe he did. Yeah, he did. All right. So yeah. So I got to see more Abel. Not much. Just that's just how they did it. Um, his his left hand come just missed the board on the jump. Uh, then they show Carson uh, Williams and. I like his profile because it focused on the fact that he did well in the past, uh, especially his win on the uh, Super 7 ladder, how he wants to do well. Um, he actually, he did really well. I thought, I really liked the pace he was going at, and um, he ended up making it all the way to Spinball Wizard, but he ended up going out, I think, uh, I think at the midway point, if I remember correctly. But yeah, Carson Williams, I really, really like him. I think, I think he's going to do well in Vegas, but... Um, at least on stage one. I think he's going to make stage two at least. But yeah, he's going on to Vegas. Um, you know, just by virtue that he beat the hourglass drop. Uh, we had a whole bunch of fast forwards at this point. Um, Sherry... Larry did? I don't know. I, I, my handwriting's bad. Uh, yeah, one of the women failed the floating steps. Um... The whole bunch of people failed the hourglass drop. They showed Kevin Klein also failing the, the hourglass drop. Then they got back, and then the Jonathan um, something or another. Uh, I need to... When I'm running fast, my handwriting is terrible. But also failed the uh, hourglass drop. Uh, a guy named Blake Devine failed the sky hooks. Uh, not, sorry, the pipe fitter. Um, then Katie Haymaker failed the sky hooks. And so, so here's the thing. At this point, they had already fast forward three of the five women, and the results were either bad or mediocre. And at this point, I'm just wondering, huh? Gee, I wonder which two women are going to be moving on to Vegas. It's almost as if I I predicted this six weeks ago during my San Antonio review last of the qualifiers, and I was like. Like, is there any doubt that Casey and Barclay are, you know, are going to be the two women that move on to Vegas? Uh, yeah. Just spoilers. I was right. It's, yeah. Um, then, hey, they decided to feature Thomas Stilling, actually show his run. Um, oh, yeah. So, um, Thomas Stilling talked about him uh, opening up a gym. Um, he had a... I believe he had a good pace. Yeah. He ended up skipping, because uh, the, the hourglass drop, uh, the board section is, se is uh, separated in two sections. He skipped the second board and almost kind of landed crotch first into the corner, which is always funny. <laughs> um, first person to make it to elevator drop of which they showed. Um, elevator climb, not drop. He did drop, though. Uh, yeah, he, he, he just couldn't make it up. Um, and uh, I do appreciate that he was disappointed that he didn't clear. Because I think it's always good for a ninja competitor to have kind of the mindset of, I want to clear, not necessarily I want to, you know, just move on. You don't want to, because you don't want to coast. Um, so I appreciate that of him. Um, then was the Olympian, uh, John Th Jonathan Horton. Um, they featured him at the end of the qualifier episode. Um, they, they mentioned the whole Olympic thing. This is his third time on A&W. Um, so, two things. So, when he made it to the warped wall, you know, the crowd would start chanting, beat the wall, beat the wall, like they, like they always do. And Jonathan actually had a pretty funny line where he said, don't get too excited. I never make it on my first try. And that, that got a laugh out of me. Uh, the other thing that um, I noticed during this run that I actually appreciate is that um, Eisen mentioned that Jonathan was taking a lot of time during his run uh, in between obstacles. And uh, I think this is a, a very important uh, point to make for when you're competing on a and uh, specifically, well, I mean, in all the, in all the stages, but specifically in uh, regionals, is that just because there isn't a time limit doesn't mean that this isn't a timed course. I think too many people take the time for granted um, because you can't just assume you're going to clear the course. I know it has the win and you're in thing, but you kind of have to assume that you're going to fail and your time 
is going to matter. Um, and unfortunately, Jonathan didn't take that into account. If he had cleared the uh, hourglass drop, he would have been fine no matter what. But unfortunately, he failed the hourglass drop um, and he was limited. And he has he still has not made it to uh, Vegas, which is which is unfortunate. I would have would have liked to have seen him, but yeah, it's just uh, just hasn't happened yet. Got to go faster sometimes. You got to go faster, people. Uh, and then it was time for Casey Catanzaro. So they've uh, during her profile they mentioned that uh, the last two seasons haven't she hasn't lived up to the expectations put onto her by NBC due to the immense amount of promotion that they give her. Um, I've said this before, you know, I have nothing against Casey as a competitor. I just think that NBC does her no favors with the way that they promote her. And uh, during her profile, they mentioned that, um, you know, that she's considering retirement. But, you know, she, she, she talked about how, like, you know, it, it just doesn't feel fun for her anymore and that she's trying to make it fun. Um, but yeah, so she ended up making it to the warp wall this time around during her actual run. And you can just, you can just feel the NBC producers just like clutching uh, each other, hoping that she makes it up the warp wall so that they can promote it again. Um, but she couldn't do it. She couldn't do it this time around. Um, those extra six inches just made uh, a big enough deal for her and uh, she couldn't make it up uh, but she still moved on because the other three women are not great in this region just going as it is um then they got uh kenny nimatello um again this kind of felt like uh, a profile that would be more appropriate for the regional qualifiers but basically him appearing on a and w uh last year got his uh daughter a donor that she needed she needed a new kidney that's great. That's great. I'm happy for them. Um, basically, uh, he ended up failing uh, the uh, hourglass drop, and I believe he did not move on. No, he didn't. He didn't. Which is, you know, which is uh, unfortunate. But yeah, it was. It was a fine. Um, it was fine. Uh, they uh, fast forward. Will Smithy failed the um, salmon ladder. Brandon Pannell, who failed uh, the hourglass drop. Jolia Fowler, who failed the hourglass drop. Uh, then they show Nicholas Coolidge midway. Hey, Nicholas Coolidge actually gets some decent airtime. Um, they started him uh, when he was on the pipe fitter, but um, he then went on to take on the elevator climb. And uh, as he was going up, um, I think he made it up like halfway before he fell, but he's making his way up and he made this face halfway when he stopped moving. And I'm just like, oh, you're done. You're done. I recognize that face. You're, you're so done. And then he fell. So he was done. <laughs> uh, then they showed more fast forwards. Tanner Ross, da Salmon Ladder, Damer, Demir Okanovich failed the hourglass drop. Glant Clinton, hourglass drop. Too many people failed the hourglass drop. <sighs> uh, then was Barclay Stockett, who is a woman who I originally found, uh, originally first was exposed to during the NNL finals. Um, I was uh, impressed by her. And I, uh, I assumed that she was going to do well in A&W. And then she did well in this course. Um, she, uh, she made it to... She made it to the hourglass drop. Uh, she cleared the warp wall, which makes her the eighth woman, although technically seventh because of how the, the film order is. Um, yeah. It was it was just a really solid run. She looked good on the course. Uh, she ended up failing the hourglass drop. Um, it wasn't it wasn't the best bounce, but you know, I I've said my piece on the hourglass drop before. Um I I think Barclay can do well. I think Barclay has a, a good future for her uh, in A and W, uh, quite frankly. Um, and you know, if if the wild card um, uh, if the wild card system was still in place, there's no doubt that she would uh, deserve to get a wild card. Um, yeah, I expect I expect good things from her in the future. Um, but it was it was during this run. I don't blame Barclay, but. Um, 
I kind of noticed uh, something. Uh, is something that I noticed about the new rules for uh, top two women move on is that Barclay, all Barclay had to do to move on to Vegas was clear the skyhooks. And one of the things that occurred to me this week was that at this point, at that point, when she cleared the skyhooks, technically, all she's doing is playing spoiler for the men. Because like I said, the main goal is that even though even though competitors should always try to clear the course, the main goal is to just move on to Vegas. I wonder, actually now that I think about it, I wonder if there's ever been a ninja who like knew he did well enough to move on and then just said, screw it, um, I'm done, I'm not going to bother attempting. Um, I, know there's like a, uh, I know there's like a cash prize for the person who does best, but maybe they just don't care. Actually, that'd be, that'd be interesting if anyone's done that. I don't think they have, but I could be wrong. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of weird and it's not Barclay's fault. I don't blame her for continuing to do well on the course. Like she, she should, she should continue to try to do the course, do as best as she can. But it's just this weird dynamic now where it's like the women, because of the new rule, technically they don't have to do as well to move on, um, in most cases, in this case, especially. Um, but you know, she was, she could have potentially just taken a spot away from another guy which you know again it's not her fault it's it's the fault of a and w with the rules I've, I've said a bunch of stuff about the new rules and what i don't like about it but it's just uh it's just a weird dynamic but i was happy i was happy to see her get as far as she did and make it up the warp wall um and hopefully uh, she'll do well in vegas all right uh, final fast forwards. Just so uh, I can't read that. Solanus <laughs> failed the hourglass drop. Andrew Lowe's failed the spin ball wizard. Why? Why did you skip a spin ball? A spin ball wizard fail. You could have just. Uh, that's disappointing. Uh, then they showed Brent Stephenson. I uh, talked about all about his alpha warrior stuff, which is nice. I really, really appreciate that. Um, because he's uh, helping the military. That's why I appreciate it. Uh, I always like people when, when people help the military and stuff. Uh, he made it all the way to the elevator climb. Uh, he looked good. He looked good. Um, Brent, the best, definitely, uh, definitely the best I've seen Brent. Um, in my opinion, um, in quite some time at least. I, I think he's looking good. He's looking good this season. Um, he made it to the elevator climb. Uh, <laughs> similar to Nicholas Coolidge, there was a point. Uh, did I write down how about 30 feet? Uh, about 30 feet up, there was just a point where I just kind of looked at him like, yeah, you're done. And then he fell. So you can tell on people's faces when they're done sometimes. And uh, he very much had that face. And then they had a weird ending. A very weird ending to this episode. The final competitor was Daniel Gill. And at this point, there was uh, no clears yet. Uh, even though we had 16 in the qualifiers, no, no, no clears yet. He was the final competitor, and in reality, assuming that you know the the, the taping is still done the same way, because he was the fastest in qualifiers, he was actually the last person to run in the regional finals. And what's weird is that they come back from break, he doesn't get a profile piece. Daniel Gill, like the person who took second place last season, uh, the man who you know, did the fastest in regional qualifiers. One of their, you know, who had a rookie year his first year. This is his third year. He was the, he was the, um, no, he didn't have, he, had, he was the rookie of the year his first year. He doesn't get a profile piece. And instead, they're just like, all right, here's Daniel Gill, go. And I was very confused. Um, at that point, they mentioned that Nathan, that Nathan uh, Burkhalter was on the bubble, which I always appreciate when they talk about who's on the bubble. Um, Daniel went very fast he made it to the wart wall in about two minutes and he ended up eliminating nick burke burt hawker uh burke halter uh by clearing the hourglass drop made it through spinball wizard and then he made it to elevator climb and i'm gonna be completely honest with you um at the beginning of this run i did not think he was gonna clear the course i just i didn't um because uh, the reason is I had just, you know, Team Ninja Warrior just happened relatively recently and he didn't look good on the invisible ladder. So I think even though that was taped like almost a year ago at this point, uh, it was kind of just stuck in my mind of like, oh, he's uh, he's not going to do it. But hey, he proved me wrong. He made it to the top. And boy, he made it dramatic at the end because he tried to pull his legs up to get onto the platform uh, 
earlier than I think anyone who cleared the course in, La in uh, Los Angeles did. So he's like almost vertical trying to uh, completely vertical trying to get his feet on this platform. And I'm just like, oh, man, please don't fall. Please don't fall. I don't want you to like flip backwards and like accidentally launch yourself past the safety uh, the safety platform that's that's rising. Um, but no, somehow he was able to pull himself up and he hit the buzzer. Fireworks go off. Hooray. Only person to clear. A great moment. Um, I think Daniel Gill is going to do very well. Um, this is, I think this is the best he's looked so far of these three years. I would not be surprised if he made it back to stage three. And that's, uh, that's Kansas City. Um, like I said, 34 Ninjas run. I believe they aired uh, 10 runs uh, in full and additional two midway and a whole bunch of fast forwards. So it's about, uh, about the same amount of runs were shown uh, as L.A. last week. And uh, I'm just going to run through this top 15. Uh, so we had one completion this time around in the form of Daniel Gill. Three people failed the elevator climb in Thomas Stillings, Nicholas Coolidge, and Brent Stephenson. Two people failed the spin ball wizard in Carson Williams and Andrew Lowe's. And the rest of the top 15 failed the hourglass drop in Josh Salinas, Brian Burke, Burkholt, uh, Demir Okanovic, Matt Holt, Grant Clinton, Abel Gonzalez, Brandon Pinnell, Cass Clausen, and Jody Avala. And the top two women moving on to Vegas is, of course, Berkeley Stockett, who moved the hourglass drop, and Casey Kanzar, who failed the warped wall, because was there any other, was there any doubt that they weren't going to be the two women moving on? No, there wasn't. So, there you go. And stop. So, yeah. Uh, that's my thoughts on Kansas City. Um, it was an episode. It wasn't bad, like Denver uh, qualifiers were, but uh, that hourglass drop, man, is just too... It was just too much of a stopgap. It kind of, you know, I think, I think it kind of stays true to the old saying that, you know, one bad apple can spoil the bunch um, because the rest of the course was really good. But that, that hourglass drop is a real stinker, quite frankly. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is about A&W and their love of trampolines, especially that super trampoline that is not cool. Um, but, yeah. I don't know. Maybe they'll figure out how to make a good hourglass drop at some point. <laughs> so, yeah. So, that's my thoughts. Um, it was okay. It was okay episode, honestly. Um, you know, it's, it's none of the competitors' faults. It's just, it just felt, it just felt old at this, you know, seeing so many people fail the hourglass drop. Um, but, yeah. What did you think? Did you like, uh, did you like the San Antonio Finals? Were you more forgiving of the hourglass drop than I was? Uh, let me know. And, I will see you next week for the Daytona Beach Finals, where we'll see people like Drew Dreschel and uh, Jesse Graff and Ryan Stratus and other people who I'm not remembering if they're in Daytona or not, so I'm not going to say them. And I'll see you next time. See ya!